lacrosse lovers take their life and with their death do bury their parents' strife. the continuance of their parents' reign shall now be the two hours traffic of our stage. I shall show myself a tyrant! Here comes to the house of Montague. Quarrel! I will back thee. I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. <laughs> do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir! Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? No, sir! I do not bite my thumb at you, sir! But I do bite my thumb! What you do? What are thou drawn amongst these heartless hides? Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage it to part these men with me. What? Is drawn and talk of peace. Peace! I hate the word as I hate hell, all Montagues and thee. Capulet! Tempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moving friends. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by the old Capulet and Montague. Have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb the streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For now, all the rest depart away. Once more on penalty of death, Where is 
Romeo? Saw you him today. Madam, a troubled mind drove me to walk abroad, where so early walking under the grove of Sycamore did I see your son. <laughs> Many a morning have you there been seen with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew. <laughs> Away from the light steals home, my heavy son, and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out, and makes for himself an artificial night. <sighs> I'll know his grievance, or else be much denied. Black and portentous must this humor prove unless good counsel may the cause remove good morrow cousin I me is the day so young <laughs> but new struck I me sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. I me what fray was here? I yeah, yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here is much to do with hate more about love. Why then, O oh brawling love, O oh loving hate, O oh anything of nothing first create? Heavy lightness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms. Feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz, I rather weep. But what? At thy good heart's oppression. Love is a smoke raised with the fume of sighs Being purged of fire sparkling in lovers' eyes Being vexed a sea nourished with lovers' tears What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking god a preserving sweet. Uh, tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? <laughs> what shall I groan and tell thee? Oh, groan, no. But sadly, tell me who. Rosaline. Oh. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. Thou canst not teach me to forget. Alike, and tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. A vulnerable reckoning, are you both? And tis a pity you lived at art so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? Child is yet a stranger in the world. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she. Our happy mothers may And 
isn't too soon mod, although so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes, but she, she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. This night, I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I've invited many a guest. At my poor house, look to behold this night, earth-treading stars that make dark heaven's light. Among fresh fennel buds shall you this night inherit at my house, and like her most, whose merit most shall be. Go, Sarah, trudge about fair Verona, and find those persons out whose names are written there, and to them say, my house, and welcome on your pleasure stay. Find them out whose names are written here? No! some new infection unto thine eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. What? Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound oh. more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, uh. whipped and tormented. Hey, fellow, I can read. Oh. Well. Signor Martino oh. and his wife and daughters, uh -huh. County Anselm and his beauteous sister, oh. 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 the Lady oh. Widow of Winter, oh. Lord Placentio and his lovely oh. nieces, oh. my fair niece, Rosalie. Oh. Rosalie. A fair assembly. Uh, who, whose house? <laughs> my master's. My master's the great rich Capulet. If you be not of the house of Montague, I pray thee, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. <laughs> Rosaline. Rosaline! <laughs> At this same ancient feast of Capulets, sups all the admired beauties of Verona. Go! And with unattainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I shall make thee think thy swan a crow. <laughs> One fairer than my love. <laughs> the all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tut! You saw her fair. None else being by, herself poised with herself in either eye. But in thy crystal scales, let there be weighed thy lady's love against some other maid. And she shall scant show well who now seems best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown. But to rejoice in splendor of my Me. Where is this girl? Juliet! Madam, I am here! Oh, what is your will? Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. A nurse, come back again. I have a 
remembered me. Mouse hear our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter is of a pretty age. Nay, I do have a brain, faith I can tell her age up into an hour. God mock thee to his grace. <laughs> Thou wast the prettiest babe ever I nursed. For then she could stand alone. <laughs> Nay, by the rude, she could have run and waddled all about. <laughs> My husband got me with this soul. He was a merry man, took up the child. Of crying and said, Oi! I wore it and I should live a thousand years. I never should forget it. Enough of this. I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, madam. Younger than you. Of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years. That you are now a maid. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. God mock thee to his grace. Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It is an honor I dream not of. Think of marriage now. Thus then in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. <gasps> a man, young lady. Why, such a man is all the world. He's a man of wax. Corona summer hath not such a flower. Oh, May, he's a flower. <laughs> What say you? Can you love the gentleman? Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris's love? I look to like if looking liking move, but no more deep will I indulge mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. I hope the guests will come. We follow thee. <gasps> Go, girl. Seek happy night. <laughs> to happy days. Go! What shall the speech be spoke for our excuse? Or shall oh. we on without apology? I'll let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and then be gone. Hey, uh, give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Hey, gentle <laughs> Romeo, we must have you dance. Uh, not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so it takes me to the ground. I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings. And soar with them above a common bound. <laughs> yeah, under love's heavy burden do I sink. Oh. Too great oppression for a tender thing. Uh, is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, Ooh. and it pricks like Thor. Oh. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. <laughs> Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Oh. Come. <laughs> Knock and enter. No sooner in than every man would take him to his legs. Come, we burn daylight home. And we mean <laughs> well in going to this mask. But tis no wit to go. Why, may one ask? 
I dreamt a dream tonight. And Ooh. so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. <laughs> <laughs> In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see. Queen Mab hath been with you. Queen Mab? What's she? Queen Mab. <laughs> Queen Mab? What's she? Queen Mab. <laughs> Queen Mab. 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 What's she? <laughs> what's she? <laughs> Queen Mab. <laughs> she is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone Drawn with a team of little atomies A thwartman's noses as they lie asleep She is that very map, she is that very map Her wagoner, a small gray-coated gnat gray -coated Her gnat. chariot, an empty Hazelnut, and in the state they gallop night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. She is that very man, she's that very man. Or lawyers' fingers, Queen Mab. who straight dream on fees. Queen Mab. Or ladies' lips, Queen Mab. who straight on kisses dream. Sometimes she driveth. Or a soldier's neck, and then he dreams of cutting foreign throats <laughs> and being frustrated, swears a prayer or two, and sleeps again. Thou, thou talkst of nothing. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy. Which is as thin a substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and being angered, puffs away from thence, turning his face toward the dew dropping south. This wind you speak of blows us from ourselves. <laughs> Strike drum! <laughs> <laughs> I fear too early, for my mind misgives Some consequence, yet hanging in the stars Shall bitterly begin his fearful date With this night's revels And expire the term of a despised life 
closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. Yet he that hath the steerage of my course direct my Come, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor, and I can tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as to please. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. Welcome, gentlemen. A hall? A hall. Give room. And foot it, girls. Oh. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables off. Quench the fire! The room has grown too hot! Oh. More lights, you names, and turn the tables up! Quench the fire! The room has grown too hot! More lights, you names, and turn the tables up. Quench the fire, the room is grown too hot. More lights, you names, and turn the tables up. Quench the fire, the room is grown too hot. Yonder lady o'er her fellow shows. Did my heart love till now? For swear it sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by its voice should be a Montague. A foe, a villain, that has hither come and spite to score our solemnity. Young Romeo, is it? Content thee, gentle cousin. Let him alone. To say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for all the wealth of this town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. I will not endure him! <laughs> You'll not endure him? You'll not endure him. Am I the master here or you? 
Musicians, hey! This intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitterest gall. Turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayers' sake. Then move not while my prayers affect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Sin from my lips, oh, t- trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. Juliet! Juliet! Julie, your mother craves a word with you. <clears throat> what is her mother? Her mother's the lady of the house, and a good lady and a wise and virtuous. I nursed her that you talked with all. I 
can tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the jinx. <laughs> she can't feel it? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. <laughs> come, the sport is at its best. <laughs> nurse, nurse, come hither. What is yon gentleman? Well, I will leave that be the son and heir of old Tiberio. What's he that is, that is now going out of door? Oh, Mary, <laughs> that's the young Petruchio. What's he that goes there that would not dance? I know not. Go, ask his name. Sir, sir. His name is Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love, sprung from my only hate? Now Romeo is beloved and loves again, alike bewitched by the charm of looks and she still loves sweet bait from fearful hooks being judged a foe he may not have access to you raise such vows as lovers use to swear and she as much in love her means much less to meet a lover anywhere but passion brings them power Time means to meet Temperine extremities with extreme sweet I go forward when my heart is here. Romeo! <laughs> Cousin! Romeo! He is wise and on my life path that has stolen home to bed. <laughs> oh, he had come this way and he had left his garden wall. Call, good Mercutio. Nay, I'll conjure too. He heareth not. He moveth not. He stirreth not. The ape is dead! Oh. <laughs> he hath hidden himself among these trees to be consorted with a humorous knight. <laughs> blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now will he sit under a medlar tree and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit. <laughs> Romeo, good night. This field bed's too cold for me to sleep. Go then. Tis vain to seek him here who means not to be found. He just as scars that never felt a wound. Soft, what light through yonder window breaks It is the east and Juliet the sun Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon Who is already sick and pale with grief That thou, her maid, art far more it is.
is my lady, oh it is my love, oh that she knew she was. She speaks, yet she says nothing, what of that? Her eyes discourse, I, I, I will answer, oh, no, no, I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. Oh, see how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon them. That I might touch that cheek. I me. Oh, she speaks. Speak again, bright angel. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, thou not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name. And for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. Then I take thee at thy word. But love and I'll be new baptized, and henceforth I will never be Romeo. What man art thou that thus bescreened a knight so stumbles on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue such rains, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither fair saint, if either thee dislike. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here! Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou thinkst I am too quickly won. Uh, lady. <laughs> By yonder blessed moon, I swear I- Swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orbs, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. Well, what shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, 
Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. Uh, uh, if my heart's dear love is... Sweet, good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night. Good night. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy heart's faithful vow for mine. <laughs> I did give thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one I'll procure to come to thee where and what time thou wilt perform the right. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Juliet! I come! But if thou meanst not well, I do beseech thee to Juliet. cease Juliet! By and by I come to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times, good night. Romeo, at what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. Romeo, I have forgot why I did call thee back. Well, let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home. But this. Good night, good night, parting is such sweet song. upon the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light, and flecked darkness like a drunkard reels from fourth day's path and titans' fiery wheels. Now o'er the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry. I must up fill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. Mm. Within the infant rind of this small flower, poison hath residence in medicine power. For this being smelt, <laughs> With dad punches each part Being tasted <laughs> Slays all senses with the heart <laughs> Good morning, Father! <laughs> Benedictus! <laughs> 
so sweet saluteth me. Young son, it argues a distempered head, so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Therefore, thy earliness doth me assure thou art uprousing with some distemperature. Or if it not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed Mwah! tonight. Father, the last is true. The sweet arrest was mine. God pardon sin. Was thou with Rosaline? Rosaline? Oh, my ghostly father, no, I have forgotten that name. And oh, that name's woe. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, that's my good boy. Uh, uh, but where hast thou been then? I've been feasting with mine enemy. <sighs> Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Then plainly know my love's dear heart is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. We we wooed and made exchange of vow. I'll tell this as we pass, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Married? A Capulet? And a Montague? Holy shit! St. Francis! What a change is here! Is a Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. For loving Rosaline. For doting, uh, not for loving. And baitest me bury love. <laughs> not in a grave to lay one in, the other out to have. I pray thee, chide not. <sighs> for she whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. Sudden haste. Uh, oh, wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. Devil should this Romeo be? Hmm? Came he not home tonight? Hmm? Who? Romeo. Oh, uh, not to his father's house. I spoke with his servant man. <sighs> Tybalt hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge? <sighs> On my life. Uh, Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Uh, he will answer the letter's master. How he dares being dared. Alas, poor Romeo, uh, he is already dead. Shot to the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with a blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. The what? Uh, oh, huh, here comes Romeo. Here comes Romeo. Signor Romeo. Bonjour. Bonjour, 
bonjour, bonjour. There's a French salutation to your French slop. <laughs> you gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. <laughs> what counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can uh, you not conceive? <laughs> pardon, good Mercutio, my business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. Why is this not better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo. Now art thou what thou art by oh, art oh, as well as by nature. Here's a goodly gear. A sword, a sword, two to a shirt and a smock. My fan, Peter, my fan, my fan. Good Peter to hide her face for her fans, the fairer face of the two. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Good ye, good morrow, gentlemen. Uh, God ye, good den. Fair, gentle woman. <laughs> is it good den? It is no less, I tell ye, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of me. Oh, 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 what a man are you? One fair gentlewoman that God hath made himself to mark. Oh, oh, oh. Can any of you gentlemen tell me where I might find the young Romeo? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. <laughs> if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence. <gasps> a board! A board! A board! <laughs> Ancient lady. <laughs> lady Love! I am none of your flying gills! I'm none lady of your skeins, mates! I pray you, sir, what a saucy merchant was that that was so full of his ropery. Uh, uh, a gentleman, nurse, who loves to hear himself talk. Oh, and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. Will he speak anything against me and I'll take him down? And he were lustier than he were and twenty such jacks. And if I can do it, oh, boy knows that shall scurvy nail and oh, thou must stand boy too and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. Scurvy name. I pray you, sir. A word. My young lady bid me, I inquire you out. What she bid me say I shall keep to myself. But let me tell you first, if you shall lead her into a fool's paradise, there were truly a gross kind of behavior, for the gentle woman is young, and therefore, as they say, if you shall deal double with her, that were truly an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman and a very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady. I protest unto thee. Bid her devise some means to come this afternoon, and there she shall at Friar Lawrence's cell be merry. Here is for thy paint. Oh, truly, sir, not a penny. <laughs> this afternoon, she shall be there. <laughs> so my mistress is the sweetest lady. Lord, Lord, when was a little pratic thing. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Nurse. Commend me to thy lady. I, a thousand times. <laughs> Nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? 
place. Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? What? My back! My back! Oh, my head! What head have I? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. <laughs> Where's your mother? Where is my mother? How oddly thou repliest. Is this the boldest of my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come, what says my Romeo? You've got leave to go to confession today. I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. Lest he's a husband to make you a wife. Oh, <laughs> now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. <laughs> Are you to church? Go, 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 go. <laughs> I'll to dinner. upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. <sighs> These violent delights uh, have violent ends and in their uh, triumphs die uh, like fire and powder which as they kiss Consume. <laughs> the sweetest honey is loathsome in its own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. <laughs> Therefore, love moderately. He's my ghostly confessor. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. <clears throat> um, Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. Ah, uh, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blaze on it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor And let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness. Make short work, for by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one.
I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets abroad. And if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now, these hot days, is the mad blood stirring. I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. Thou art like one of these fellows that when he enters a tavern Claps his sword upon the table and says God send me no need of thee And by the operation of the second cup Draws him on the draw When indeed there is no need Am I like such a man? Thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street because he has wakened thy dog that oh, has lain asleep Lord, in the I sun, know. and yet thou look to to me from quarreling. Hm. Oh, by my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Gentlemen, good head. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. Oh. You shall find me apt enough for that, sir. And you will give me occasion. Can you not take some occasion without giving? <laughs> Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. What? Consort? What would thou make us, minstrels? And thou'lt make minstrels of us. Look to hear nothing but this. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. <laughs> Zoom's consort. Uh, here we talk in the public haunts of men. Either retire to some private place and reason coolly of thy grievance, or else be gone. Here all men's eyes look upon us. Men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I'll budge for no man's pleasure. I. <sighs> well, peace be with you. Here comes my man. Romeo? What? Romeo! The love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. <laughs> Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain, I am none. Therefore, farewell. I see. Thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst divine. Till thou shalt know the reason of my love Till then, good Capulet, whose name I tender as dearly as mine own Be satisfied Oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission Tybalt, you rat catcher Will you walk? What wouldst thou have of me? Nothing, good king of cats but one of your nine lives. Oh, no, 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 Will you no, pluck no, your no, sword no. out of his pilcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears ere it be out. I am for you. Gentlemen, you will put that rake up, sir. Oh, no, 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 stop this. Gentlemen, you will tipple. Gentlemen, say, forbear this outrage. Oh, what's so clowning him now? The prince has expressly forbid this. Back, back. <laughs> it is done. Be gone now. Oh, give water! Yield to this! This is madness! What? Oh. You took it up! Oh, this! Oh, Romeo! Oh, what is this? What? You Hurt. What are the hurts? I. Oh no. 
by no. a scratch. Oh no! Go, villain, fetch me a surgeon! Uh, go! Courage, man! Go. The, the hurt cannot be much. <laughs> it is not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but it will serve. Ask for me tomorrow and you shall find me a grave man. Oh, say this not. No. I am peppered, I warrant, for this world. Why the devil came you between us? I, uh, I was hurt under your arm. I thought it all for the best. Oh. Help me to some house, Ben Bolly, or I shall fight. Yes, yes, no. A plague upon oh, your oh, houses! Oh. They've made worms meet me. Oh, oh, oh. Your houses! Brave Mercutio is dead. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> Alive! No! In triumph, Mercutio slain! <laughs> Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads! <laughs> Staying for life to keep him company! <laughs> Either thou or I or both must go with him! Thou wretched boy! That has been sort in here! So with him hence! This shall determine that! Romeo must not live! No! Not Ro <laughs> Romeo slew Tybalt. Tybalt slew Mercutio. Who then doth owe the price of this dear blood? Not Romeo, Prince. <gasps> he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt. <laughs> and for that offense, we do exile him hence. Oh, Let no. Romeo hence in haste. Else when he is found, that hour be his last. Possessed 
loved it, and though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. How tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without walls, but torture, purgatory, hell itself. But thou cutst my head off with the golden axe and smilest upon the stroke that murders me. <laughs> Rude unthankfulness. <laughs> the kind prince, taking thy part, has rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. But this is torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every cat and dog may look upon her, but Romeo may not. He is banished. Banished, friar the damned use that word in hell. 
Hear me a little speak. Well, again, speak of banishment. I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Hang off philosophy. Unless philosophy can make a Juliet. Plant a town, reverse a prince's doom, it helps not, it prevails not, talk no more! Move to our see that mad men have no ears! Should they when that wise men have no eyes? Let me dispute with thee of thy estate! Good Romeo, hide thyself! Who knocks so hard? Whence comes you? What's your will? Let me come in and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome then. Oh, holy friar, where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? There, on the ground, made drunk with his own tears. Oh, even so lies she, blobbing and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up, stand up, stand, and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, Rise and stand! Speakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Doth she not think me an old murderer? How is she and where doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps and then falls on her bed and rises up again and then falls down again. Tell me, friar. Tell me. What part of this vile anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me that I might suck the hateful militant! Disparate hand! Art thou a man? <laughs> thy form cries out, thou art! With thy tears are womanish! Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast! Hast thou slain, Tybalt? Will thou slay thyself? And slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself! Thy Julian is alive! A pack of blessings light upon thy back, but like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou poutest upon thy fortune in thy love. Take heed! Take heed for such time miserable. Go, get thee to thy love as was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence and comfort her. But lookest thou stayest not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live until we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, Beg pardon of the prince and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wittest forth in lamentation. Yes. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go before, nurse. Uh, uh, commend me to thy lady and bid her hasten all the house to bed. <laughs> Romeo is coming! Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me, nay more. I doubt it not. Go you to Juliet, ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of Paris's love. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. Tell her Thursday she shall be married to this noble earl. My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow.
It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark. The more no nightingale. Night's candles are burnt out, and Jock and Day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight. I know. not be gone. You hear that? Death, come and welcome. Juliet wills it so. I have more care to stay than will to go. What is it, my soul? Let us talk. It is not yet day. It is. It is. I hence be gone. Away. It is the law. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. Oh, now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Mistress, your lady mother's coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Look about. Oh, then, window, let day in and let life out. Oh, thinks thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not. And let these sorrows serve as sweet discourse for our time to come. Either my eyesight fails or thou looks pale. Believe me in my eyes, so do you. Adieu. Adieu. Oh, daughter, are you up? Who is it that... Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now, by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself. Have you delivered to her our decree? I, sir, but she will none. How will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Does she not count her blessed? Unworthy as she is that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom. Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to church on Thursday, or never have to look me in the face. God in heaven, bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to raise her soul. Peace, you mumbling fool. Utter your gravity over a gazette ball. God, it makes me mad. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. 
Thursday is near, lay hand on heart. Advice, you be mine. I'll give you to my friend, and you be not hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul, I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. No, what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, bethink you. I'll not be forsworn. For I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Oh, God! Oh, nurse, how shall this be prevented? What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse! Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished. And since the case so stand as it now doth, I think it best you marry with Sir Paris. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Beshrew my very heart. By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. We call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I think you are happier in this second match, for it excels your first, or if it did not, your first is dead. Or twar is good he were as living here, and you've no use for him. Speakest thou this from thy heart? And from my very soul, too, or else beshrew them both. To Mantua, where thou shalt live, until we can time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and bring thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy. Amen. What? I am gone, having displeased my father, to Friar Lawrence's cell, to make a confession, and to be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. death and therefore have I little talked of love for Venus smiles not in a house of tears now her father 
counts it dangerous that you do grief or sorrow, so much sway. And in his wisdom, haste our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears. <gasps> <laughs> We met my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I am to be a wife. Poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. Come you to me. Confession to this father. Do not deny to him that you love me. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now? Or shall I send to thee at evening mass? Uh, I am at leisure, pensive daughter, now. And my lord, we must entreat the time alone. Juliet. On Thursday early will I rouse thee. Till then I do and keep this holy kiss. Oh, shut the door. And when thou hast done so, come weep with me. Best hope, best care, best help. Ah, Juliet. I already know thy grief. Tell me not, Friar, that thou knowest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. Be not so long to speak. I long to die. Ah! Oh, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution. If, rather than to marry this uh, Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself. Oh, bid me leap from off the battlements of yonder tower rather than marry Paris. Or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud. Hold then. Go home. Be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Take thou this vial. Then being in bed and the distilled liquor drink thereof. No breath, no light shall testify thy livest. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade. Thy eyes windows fall. Like death when it shuts up the day of life. Each part deprived of supple government shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt remain two and forty hours and then awakest from a pleasant sleep. Thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, Against thou shalt awake, uh, shall I uh, write letters to Romeo that he may know our drift, and hither shall he come, and that very night he and I will watch thy waking, and Romeo shall bear thee hence, and this shall free thee from this present shame. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not of fear. Hold. Get you gone. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed with letters to thy lord. My headstrong, where have you been guiding? Where I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition. Pardon, I beseech you. 
Henceforward, I'm ever ruled by you. Why I am glad on it, this is as it should be. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. <laughs> I nurse, those attires are best. But leave me now to myself. What are you busy, ho? I need you my help. No, madam. We have called such necessaries as are behooveful for our state tomorrow. And so please you, let me now be left alone. And let the nurse this night sit up with you. For I'm sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. to go, but never to return, no. Son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. See, there she lies. Never was so black a day as this. 
My child is dead. And with my child, my joys are buried. <laughs> Uh, um, you dry up your tears and in all her best array bear her to church. I have bridal flowers serve for a buried corpse. Uh, sir, you go in and madam, you go with him and go, Sir Paris. Prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. to lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing that I will. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. All this day, an unaccustomed spirit lifts me from the ground with heavy thoughts. I dripped. My love came and found me dead and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I was revived and became an emperor. How now, Balthazar? Does that not bring me letters from the friar? How is it with it? Juliet, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Her body sleeps in the Capulet tomb, and her immortal part with angels lives. I, I saw her laid low. Pardon me for bringing this ill news. Seeing so. Then I defy you, Star! <laughs> Are you sure you bring me no letters from the friar? No matter. Get thee gone and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Mischief, thou art swift. Enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabout he dwells. If a man did need a poison now, here lives a caitiff wretch would sell it to him. What ho, apothecary! Who calls so loud? Give me a dram of poison, such soon speedy year as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life-weary taker may fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, but the law, tis death to any he that utters them. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. Be not poor, but break it, and take this. My poverty, but not my will consent. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison to men's souls than these poor compounds that they may not sell. Farewell. to Juliet's grave. <laughs> For there must I use thee. Uh, uh. Holy friends, 
Franciscan brother, Friar John, welcome. Oh, what is Romeo? I could not send your letter, nor find a messenger to bring it there. So fearful of infection were they. In this city where the infectious pestilence did reign, such as of the town, being fearful that we both were in an infectious house, sealed up the doors and would not let me pass so that my speed was their stay. Oh, who bear my letter to Romeo? I could not bring it. There it is again. Oh, this letter was full of charge, and the neglecting it may do much danger. Go! Oh, oh, now I must do the tomb alone. Within this three hours, will fair Juliet awake? And Romeo has had no notice of these accidents. Oh, but I will write again and keep her at my cell. Ah, Juliet, poor living corpse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Go! Give me my torch, boy. Stand aloof, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the church tread tread. But if thou hearest something, whistle then to me that thou hearest hearest something approacheth. Do as I bid thee, go. Sweet flower, with flowers, Thy bridal bed I shrew Thy canopy is dust and stones With which we water nightly will I do With tears distilled by moans What cursed foot wanders this way tonight? My obsequies and true love's right. Muffle me night a while. Hold, take this letter early in the morning. See thou deliver it to my lord and father. I charge thee, whatever thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my course. But if thou jealous dost return to pry in what I farther shall intend to do, Hungry churchyard with thy limbs. The time and my intents are savage, wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers or the roaring sea. I will be gone, sir. Not trouble you. And so thou shalt show me friendship. Here, take thou that. Live and be prosperous. Farewell, good fellow. For all the same, I'll hide here about his looks, I fear, and his intents. I doubt. Thou detestable ma, thou womb of death, I enforce thy rotten jaws to open. This is that vanish, Montague, that murdered my love's cousin. In here has come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. Stop thy and hallow with toil, thou Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. And leave me Think upon these gone Say not Be gone Live And 
here after say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I do defy thy conjuration and apprehend thee as a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy! In faith I will. Did I dream it so? Or am I mad? Hearing him talk of Juliet Death, lie thou there by a dead man interred. Lies thou there in thy bloody sheet. Forgive me, cousin. Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Worms are thy chambermaids. Oh, here <laughs> will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes. Look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, oh you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss a dayless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come. 
I'm on savory guide. Here's to my love. To a private carry by drugs, quick. Thus with a kiss, I What torches young that vainly lends its light? Tireless skulls and the Capulet's tomb. It's too long, my master, Romeo. How long has he been there? Oh, half an hour. Go with me to the vault. I dare not, sir. Oh, much I fear some ill and thrifty thing. Romeo! Romeo! What? Who else? Paris, who? What an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance! Oh, oh. comfortable friar. And then came even the same doom, this letter. 
He really bid me give his father and threatened me with death if I departed not and left him there. Give me this letter. <laughs> this letter doth make good the friar's words. We still have known thee for a holy man. <laughs> Where are these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge has been laid upon thy hate. How heaven has conspired to kill thy joys and love. And I, for winking at your discords, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. All are punished! A glooming peace does this morning with it bring. The sun, for weeping, will not show its head. Go forth, and have more talk of these sad things. Some will be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe. Than this of Juliet and her Romeo.